Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about working with Linux. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look on how to install my currently favorite code editor on Linux and this is gonna sound weird but it's actually Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Yes, I know, you heard me right, I said Microsoft on Linux, it sounds so weird but it's actually a pretty good code editor that works really well on my installation of Pop! OS and it's super fast and it's full of extensions that help me a lot in my daily work. So let me show you what I mean by accepting Microsoft in the Linux family. Let's open Firefox and let's search for Visual Studio Code. And don't get confused, it's not Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio are two completely different things from Microsoft because Microsoft likes to confuse people. This is currently my favorite code editor that I'm using on Pop! OS, I'm using on elementary OS, and it's really fast and helps me a lot, it's just great. Of course, if you don't want to use this, there are plenty of different fully open source code editors that you can use instead of accepting Microsoft in your daily life. You could use like Atom by GitHub, you could use uh, the built-in GNOME Builder for like GNOME desktops. You could use like Bluefish or uh, Scratch from elementary OS. There are a lot of like open source code editors that you can actually use if you don't want to say hi to Microsoft. But let's install it and let me show you why I really really like it. First it comes with a default dev file so we can just download it directly, save the file in our download folder and that's done, that's perfect. Let's open the folder, double click, Pop! OS comes with Eddy, that it's an amazing application that handles the installation of Debian files. So let's click install, let's enter our password, mm, downloading, blah, blah, blah. It's super fast, so it's gonna take like less than a minute. Perfect, let's remove these files from the list. Let's have everything here. Awesome, now we can launch our Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, the first time you open it, it looks really Microsoft-y, like has the layout of a typical Microsoft product, has some weird color choices that I don't really understand, and like these introductions, so many things, it's kind of like bloated and overwhelming, but let's update it a little bit to make it look like I like it. But before doing that, I wanna actually open a file, I wanna open a folder with a specific project. I can do it directly here by clicking open folder and again prompt with the default Window Explorer, like the file opener of the operating system. But the thing that I really like is that I can open a folder directly from the terminal. So let's open a new instance of the terminal. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. Let's access my sites folder and then the AWPS folder that I just used it to install a new instance on AWPS on my WordPress local installation, whatever. Here we have the list of files, we have everything. We have PHP files, JavaScript files, we're using Composer, we're using NPM to download the packages. There's everything, so we can actually have a fully fledged project where we can check pretty much all the file installations and see if they work properly on uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code. In order to open this folder in VS Code, we can just simply type code and then space and then period. So we are telling the terminal to open the code editor at this specific folder. And there you go, we have everything here. Already we have some sweet, sweet icons that represent the type of files and these are great. I don't like these open editors theme, so hide from this sidebar. I don't like this welcome page because it's awful. Let's open the regular index.php. There you go. This is like the default look that is pretty ugly and pretty awful. So let's change a bunch of things. Let's access the extensions and let's search for my favorite theme that currently is Monokai Pro. Let's install it and let's reload it. Nothing changed because we didn't actually set it up. So let's go back in our main view of our folder and you have the shortcut Control Shift E and let's type Control Shift M P and we're gonna get prompt with these like quick access like really similar to Sublime Text and we can define our color theme. So if we hit of course color theme, we're gonna get the preferences, color theme, Let, let's hit enter, and here we can uh, scroll through all the 
currently available theme that we have here. And of course, there are some pretty um, ugly choices that I don't understand who will ever use it. But here, let's scroll down to Monokai Pro. Look at that. This is gorgeous. And of course, if your eyes are kind of like get tired, you can use a different filter. Like you can use blue, you can use like the spectrum that it's kind of better. Um, let's go with the filter spectrum because it's, um, yeah, it's really dim. I like the colors, I like the background and it looks pretty good. Uh, just a little disclaimer, Monokai Pro is not Free, you should definitely buy the license if you decided to adopt it. Otherwise, you can revert back to the default Monokai and maybe tweak a little bit the colors. But Monokai Pro, it's super cheap. You should definitely give money to these guys that develop this amazing theme. So that's perfect. And as also, Monokai Pro comes with unique type of icons that automatically update itself. So there you go. Let's continue customizing Visual Studio Code. And if you don't really know what to do and what to install, and if it's confusing or overwhelming, just go to the extension tab and automatically VS Code will recognize the type of file that you're currently working on or like the main type of files in your project and it will suggest uh, some recommended packages for you to install. Like in this case, I have a PHP file, so it's suggesting a PHP code sniffer, the PHP debugger. That's pretty useful, but let's follow my personal preference in selecting packages. So let's install the Sublime Text key map. Basically, we'll change and update all the key bindings to reflect the Sublime Text key bindings because I used Sublime Text for many, many years. So I'm really used to those, those key bindings. And I really like this extension because it makes life easier. Now let's install another icon set that I really like and is the material icon theme. So let's install this one. That's perfect. Let's reload our code editor. And there you go. Uh, when you open it for the first time, the system will recognize that you install a new package and it will ask you to activate this package. You just say yes. And there you go. We have our icons. There are many, many things that you can do with Visual Studio Code, but by default already comes with a lot of interesting things and the built-in Git lens or the built-in git source control tab it's really interesting because it gives you a pretty quick overview of all the things that changed in your recent files if your folder or your project is inside a git repository that's super handy let's continue by changing another couple of things so first the source map to the right i never use it so let's completely hide it by writing toggle minimap that's good then i don't use the toolbar at the bottom like these information are not useful for me. So also in this case, let's hide the status bar. That's perfect. That's more like it. And then let's change a little bit the preferences for my code editor or what I'm seeing here. So let's hit control comma and automatically we're going to enter the JSON configuration file for our user settings. To the left, you're going to see pretty much the full list of all the settings that you can customize in um, Visual Studio Code. To the right is your own uh, personal settings. So first, let's copy a bunch of things that I really, really like, like the editor font size. I want to increase it to 16. And when you save the file, automatically everything will adapt to your settings. The good thing about the user setting of Visual Studio Code is that it has a built-in search inside the JSON file. So if you are looking for something, you don't have to scroll like a thousand lines and just try to find the things that you love. Just like type, for example, line height or like curse of light. Okay, editor line height, perfect. That's what I was looking for. So let's continue customizing my installation and my line height. Line height, I want to be one, no, 16 is in pixels. So let's put the same, but I really like a more like Paisy line height because yes, let's go 26. Yes, that's perfect. That's way easier. Okay, point. then letter, letter spacing, okay. D font is a little bit too squished. So letter spacing, let's put it to one and let's see what it does. Perfect, way more hairy. I like it, it's way more readable. Then let's activate the ligatures that for now, all, right now it's all false. Ligatures are really interesting stuff. So let's set it to true. And I don't think this is gonna change because we're not using the proper font, okay. So ligatures are a really great thing of Visual Studio Code that recently they activated also on Sublime Text. But if we search for like 
actually let's remove everything we have here editor font family okay we are on droid sans mono so this is the default font family that it's activated by default on Visual Studio Code. I really like to use a specific font family called Fira Code. So let's install that by accessing Firefox. Let's type Fira Code. There you go. And this font is a monospace font with font ligatures, with programming ligature. You, see, you can see here how it changes when you have like exclamation mark and equal. So it's that is not, it turns into this really nice symbol that with this like break and handlebar on top of the equal. So pretty much every time you have some coding related symbols automatically will get turned into font ligatures and it looks really good and it's way easier to read. So let's install this by clicking on how to install. We need to on Linux install the package for your distribution by following the instruction. Perfect. We are on Ubuntu 17.04. It's actually Pop! OS based on Ubuntu. So we can use sudo the official package. So let's switch to our terminal and let's sudo apt install fonts fire code. Then there you go. The font is installed. So let's switch to Visual Studio Code and let's type here double single quote, fire code, save it. There you go. Now you see that the font changed slightly, but it doesn't really make any difference. The difference that we can notice if we access the index, look here, do you see these really like nice ligatures or different ligatures? Or oh, let me give you an example. So if we access our config folder and we go inside in it, you see here, let me zoom in a little bit the text. Look at that. If the services has register, so we're simply using basically the regular symbol with the dash and then the arrow. But if these two symbols are together, dash and arrow, it turns into a, like a long arrow. And if we keep adding, of course, if the font ligature accepts it, it's going to turn it. So if we have two dashes, we have a full length. Then if we have like equal and another equal, it turns into a bigger one. If we have three equals, so it means identical to so one, two, three, it turns into a three lines equal. If we have different, so exclamation mark and equal, so we're using these two symbols together, it turns into this one and it goes on and on. So these are the font ligature that I really, really love in my installation of Microsoft Visual Studio Code. And this is great. Let's not save this file because we messed it up. That's it. This is pretty much like the default things that I really like to use in my Visual Studio Code. Of course, use the user settings here and uh, scroll down and check pretty much all the options that you can customize. And they're really a lot and you can write your JSON file. And when you install a new version of Visual Studio Code on another machine, you can just simply export and copy the JSON file and paste it in another machine. So to have pretty much the same identical experience in your new operating system with the same Visual Studio Code. The last thing that I want to tell you about Visual Studio Code is the IntelliSense. So by default, when you have a specific operation and something that it's connected to another like class or something, automatically you should be able to check what these like specific class belongs to, this namespace we're using for something specific, we're including all these classes. So it would be nice to have something that connects this class to the actual file that is connected. This is possible thanks to IntelliSense. And uh, Visual Studio Code comes with IntelliSense included by default, but every single coding language, every single scripting language has its own IntelliSense. And you can install everything that you need in order to work on what you're working right now, like the current project. So I really want the PHP install IntelliSense, then I want the NPM IntelliSense, SESS IntelliSense that I really like, uh, JavaScript and TypeScript IntelliSense, that's perfect. I'd say that's it. You can install, of course, everything to include that you need in your, in your project. Let, let's reload 
Visual Studio Code. Wonderful. Now, if we go into a PHP file that it's including some specific class and we go on rollover to that specific class name, we're gonna get the definition where these tags is coming from, where is defined. So for example, if we have these services, we don't remember these services, where is defined. If we go on rollover, you see that it gives you the highlight of where the service is defined with the self instantiate class that it's basically right here. But of course, you could have it in a different file. This is really, really useful. And of course, it works also for the all the PHP definitions we have. Uh, if we go and roll over on a specific built in default PHP function or PHP method, we will have the description of that specific function with some pretty cool highlights. You can install a lot of different modules that work with IntelliSense. You should really explore that thing. It's really, really important for you to use it. The last thing that I want to show you, if you're a heavy user of NPM packages or module and stuff like that, really cool extension called true cost. So if we go inside the extension and we type true cost, or it's actually import cost, sorry, I forgot, install it. And then after the installation that it's gonna take a while, let's wait, perfect, install, let's reload. Now, look what we have here calculating let's give it a couple of seconds there you go we have a common example that we cannot select it's not something that we wrote it's something that automatically the import cost extension will detect so we're importing jquery and it says that hey the full version of jquery is 86 kilobytes and gzipped you could get the 30 kilobytes. So you have the ability to understand how heavy all your modules and all your implementation, your, your requirements, all the libraries that you get from NPM and the node modules are affecting the speed of your website, are affecting all the speed of all the things that you're working on. And of course it changes color if it's something is like heavier than 100 kilobytes. For example, I'm importing Slate Carousel that it's kind of heavy and by default is 127 kilobytes. So I should consider or using another Carousel or just importing a sub module if I just need one simple feature and not the full library of this full module. So these cost, this import cost extension, it's really, really useful. And of course, as I said at the beginning, because we're working on a JavaScript file, I'll automatically Visual Studio Code will recommend some uh, JavaScript hinting, some beautify for our JavaScript and more stuff that will help us in our project. All the recommended files, all the recommended lists are here. So if we extend, we can have more and more. The more we use it, the more Visual Studio Code will try to help us to install extensions that can help us during our daily job, and this is great. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Of course, I didn't show you everything about Visual Studio Code because it's pretty massive, but I show you the basic things, how to install a theme, how to install an icon theme, how to set up the your user settings, your preferences settings with a JSON file, and the few packages that I always install. Of course, feel free to shoot me an email or to write down the list of packages that you really, really like that could be really useful for other users that are watching this video. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. Please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.